Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. Welcome to another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. This week is gonna be a bit of an abbreviated form. It is, uh, it's 8.09 in the evening right now and I almost forgot about Tool Time Tuesday. And then I was working in the evening, well around six o'clock, just shining up the bevels on these little guys. And I remember that I had a lot of comments and questions about my buffing setup. So I'm gonna show you that real quickly today. But first we're gonna do some viewer knives. Now I don't have my phone and all my notes. Usually I kind of organize all my notes and the images ahead of time so I can kind of look at them and speak to them. Uh, I'm gonna do all that in post-production while I'm editing this. So I'm just gonna insert viewer knives right here. First knife we'll look at is sent to us by James, and this one here he actually used a ebony fingerboard from an upright base that he repurposed for the scales. And uh, James's shop is by no means a complete shop. He's got a one by thirty Harbor Freight uh, belt sander, and he uses a lot of things uh, as a musician, like repurposed symbols and stuff like that for spacers and liners. And what fantastic work, James! These look so cool. Thank you for sharing these with us. James is from Iowa City, Iowa. Next, we're going to look at a couple blades from Andre, and he's from Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, he sent these pictures of these knives he's made, fantastic looking blades. He's been making blades for about a year now, and he actually gave me a tip of, there's a problem I was having in a previous video, and he gave me a tip on how to correct it, so I'm definitely going to try that, and if it works out really well, I'm going to share that with you too. So, Andre, thanks for the tip, and thanks for sending in your knives. And we're going to finish up the viewer knife section of this video with a knife that was sent to us by Carlos. Now, Carlos is from Mission BC, and he made this knife out of a stainless steel circular saw blade that he picked up uh, from a hardware store. The brass pins were from Rona. And you know what? In his email, he kind of talked about the process that he went through to make this knife. And what really stood out to me is that there were a lot of unknowns in what he was doing. But he just went ahead and proceeded and just made the knife. And to me, that is probably one of the most critical areas about knife making is just do it. Uh, you might not know exactly how it's going to turn out. It might turn out not how you thought. It might not be good. It might be good. But you never know until you try. So very well done, Carlos. Thank you so much for saying this in. Great to hear from another Canadian. Cheers. All right. And thanks, guys, so much for saying those knives in. Really appreciate it. Let's head over and I'll just show you my buffing setup. Uh, I apologize for the noise. My neighbor is out swathing hay right now. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit noisy, but he should be out in the field soon. So one of my favorite things about summer is watching them cut hay. I don't know why. I just really like it, but uh, I do apologize for the background noise in this video. All right. So this is my main polisher right here. Now this is a Magnum. I don't know what that is. That's just some cheap junky brand. Um, eight inch bench polisher. Now if I were to have my dream set up, I'd probably get a nice ball door or something like that. This is by no means a really good quality machine. Uh, I think it was like 70 bucks. So I just use it. Um, and with this, I have it set up on the right side. I have a yellow wheel, which is a more uh, aggressive. And the left side here, I've just got a regular white cotton buff now when I bought this wheel here it said that it's impregnated the fabric is actually impregnated with stuff and I'm not I'm trying to figure it out when you feel the fabric it's a lot more aggressive a lot rougher than like the the cotton buff so this one does do a much more aggressive job and I use compound with this one uh, pretty much black compound with this we'll talk about the compounds in just a minute and then the one other machine I use for polishing is this this is a furnace motor and it's got a little adapter on here now you can buy these at places like Princess Auto Harbor Freight would probably sell them a really slick little option and I just have a little switch on here and I use this just for really light polishing and buffing afterwards uh, mostly like when everything's all done I just get a real light buff and kind of clean everything up uh, take the lint off I'll show you the compound I use with this in a minute uh, but this does a beautiful job of really bringing out especially if you're going with a mirror finish this puts like a beautiful polish with this compound auto solve that I use again I'll show you that in one moment back to this one here so with this wheel here what I'll use this for is if I you know I go to about 800 grit if I'm doing like a mirror polish on steel and then what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll use a black compound and that black compound with this wheel it'll actually remove a lot of the surface scratches from the steel now one thing to keep in mind is that when you're polishing with this what I usually do is keep a bucket of water handy because it does heat up the blade quite a bit not to the point that I think it would affect the temper of the knife but it makes it uncomfortable in your hands it gets really hot so I always dunk it in water when I'm doing this as well and then on this side is just like a regular cotton buff it's much more soft and pliable than these uh these aggressive ones 
and I'll use this one with like white rouge. Typically what I use this the most for is, like I said, if I'm doing a mirror polish on a bevel, I use that to put a really nice finish on the blade. Uh, but more than that, I use this for finishing my handles. Like when I'm doing G10, micarta, and synthetics, uh, if you get down to about 400 grit and then come over here and give it a buff, this takes out any little tiny imperfections and scratches in the synthetic handle material. I've tried it on wood and it works good except that it stains it and then you're going over it with like lacquer thin or something to clean it and then you kind of just ruin the whole point of putting a nice mirror polish on it because you dry out the wood so I don't use this one. I don't use many of these with wood at all uh, but it works really really good for synthetics. Now when you buy these uh, polishing compounds they're basically different grits or like different abrasive levels. Uh, lots of different colors. You can get brown, white, black, green, red. I'm sure there's others and a lot of times when you buy them in like a multi-pack they will have you know kind of recommended materials. Uh, the black is the most aggressive and so this is the one I use the most. Also one thing that I do use this for is uh, polishing the edges of Kydex. When I'm done a Kydex sheath I'll uh I'll sand it only to about 220 and come over here and it just kind of you got to be really careful actually because you can just cut start cutting your kydex with this uh, buffing wheel here but it just puts a really nice smooth polish and it makes it look like it's one piece of plastic uh, as long as your joint and your seam is nice and tight it works really good like that and then the white they typically were refer to as a jeweler's rouge and uh, I would say black and white are pretty much the only two that I use uh, this one uh, this is actually for a leather strop, stropping compound, but this also does a really nice polish um, when you're doing like uh, leather stropping and stuff like that. So I do use this compound with a, a felt belt on my 2x72 grinder. Uh, just sometimes if I want to put a mirror polish on a bevel or something like that, and actually I'll polish secondary bevels a lot with this stuff as well. So that's pretty much it. Now the one thing that I don't do that I see a lot of people do, and honestly I've just never tried it, is they'll dress their wheels and you can get these brushes and it's it's basically like a piece of wood and it looks like it's just got nails or staples coming through it. So it's kind of like a brush or a comb, but really, really coarse. Um, I would say like maybe every quarter of an inch there's like a nail sticking up and they'll they'll turn their machines on and just kind of and I'm not entirely sure, like I've never done that. I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna try it, but I just want you to know with this video that that is always an option and some people that I really uh, respect their understanding of the way things work do that so I'm thinking I'm probably gonna have to start and then back to the compound that I used with this little furnace motor buffer uh, this autosol metal polish this stuff is slick as a whistle I, I'm absolutely a huge fan even if you got like you know you're polishing chrome on a vehicle or something like that uh, this thing does a fantastic job all right, so there's a little look at my buffing setup. Now there's not all that much to talk about. It's not super exciting, but a lot of you guys have asked about it and I just thought I'd share it with you here. And also probably the most important thing with these is that they need to be given a healthy dose of respect. A lot of people refer to these as the most dangerous tool in their shop and I don't necessarily quite take that approach. I mean, I've got mine mounted right beside my metal lathe. Having said that, these things can teach you really bad lessons very quickly. So, uh, you know, part of the thing I think makes these things so dangerous is that they seem innocent when they're running. You know, you turn it on, you start polishing, and ooh, that's kind of neat. But if you're, say, if you're polishing a mirror polish on a knife and you've got your flat here, if you get it close to the edge there, it's going to want to grab that knife and just rocket it towards the ground. And from there, it could bounce who knows where. So definitely use caution. Pay attention when you're using these. If you've followed my channel for a while, you may remember a video I did a while ago where I made a hidden tang knife. And in that video, I was actually polishing it and the buffing wheel here grabbed that knife and shot it at the ground. And I didn't edit that clip out because I wanted to show that that stuff does happen. So definitely give them respect, but treat them properly, pay attention, and you should be good to go. If you don't have one of these in your shop, I'd highly recommend it especially when you consider how inexpensive it is to get into a tool like this. And there's so many different uses for it. I think once you have one, you'll be glad you did. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, today I posted an Instagram story, and it's a sneak peek about a product that I just received in the mail that is going to be part of our 100,000 subscriber giveaway on this channel. So no, if you're watching this video right when it comes out, you can check out my Instagram and look at the story. Uh, you might actually see what it is we're giving away. Other than that, I am going to do an announcement video coming up in about a week or so, maybe shorter. But anyways, guys, it's really exciting. I'm excited to tell you what we have available for a giveaway. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. That thing is loud. <laughs>